if you can now somehow take whatever that learned behavior was from one bot to another, which will be difficult because they're all very different. You know, agility is clearly different than the others. Okay? Right. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Some of them have hands, some of them don't have hands. Some of them have different types of hands. You know, if there's some kind of dexterity that's going to go on, how well does that map? Then you could take two bots, like um, uh, you could take like the Unitry bot and uh, and also the Aptronics. Aptronics is using all linear drives for actuation of everything. And then uh, Unitry is all rotational ones. So they're roughly the same size. When you compare them next to each other, they have the same four kind of arms and stuff like that moving around. But because they're actuated very differently, the question is, will the learned behavior of one be able to transfer to the other? Right. Now, speaking of Unitree, they did show today the robot doing a backflip, okay? That's a non-hydraulically actuated robot doing a back. At this point, we thought in order to do parkour, you needed to be Boston Dynamics Atlas. Okay, so what we're going to see here is that we have a real humanoid bot doing the flip. <laughs> and I love the way it shakes its head like it's almost giving this, and I was like, yeah, right. I nailed it. So if we look at the simulation, we'll see how perfect the simulation is. I mean, it, it it sticks the landing every time. The real bot does not. When you when we noticed the real bot was doing it, the real bot was like kind of undershooting a little bit and hitting with its toes, yet it's still able to recover, which in many ways is even more remarkable that it knew what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So from the simulation, you can only get so far. And, you know, from that, they realize if they got the masses and inertias and everything in there correct in the torques, they're able to get a reasonable guess on what that profile is. And we all know that a, a lot of these jumping tricks, while it's nice to, to be really powerful, have a lot of strength, it's more technique than it is power. So up till now, Opt or uh, Atlas has been able to do it because it's a brute. You know, right. it's just able to deliver that power to kind of do what you want. But the reality is, if you apply a little bit of physics and you kind of understand exactly how to do it, you know, the whole thing with the figure skater, pulling the arms and all that, to get that rapid rotational motion and then doing the kick out to kind of come on in there, you can do that. And of course, the first time you do something like that, you know, you can be told theoretically what you have to do by your coach all the time. You can read about it. You can watch videos of it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know. It's exactly what Then you go out and do it. You're not going to get it right the first time. You're going to either over rotate or under rotate. And of course it under rotated, came down on his toes and it could have either fallen flat in its face, which is what most of us would have done. Or, you know, a lot of us, especially those who are really, have really good balance would know how to recover. Right. And so it, it, it remember they've been pushing that bot over a lot, a lot, a lot. That bot knows how to not fall down. <laughs> so it probably was like, when it came down on its toes, it's like, Oh, I've been here before. I know what I need to do. And then you see it kind of pulled its legs up and shoved its feet up forward again to try to recover. Right. To do what it did. So that again shows this idea that you train it on so many different scenarios that if it knows how to not trip or recover from a trip, you you teach it something like that and it doesn't have to be perfect. And then it's going to figure out, well, let's keep doing it in the real world. What do I really have to do? Because as much as I can recover from trips, I don't like tripping. You know, it's just doesn't, you know, I really want to stick that landing. And so you can imagine that's going to happen. So that little hiccup in there, I think is more impressive because if they had landed it perfectly, I, you know, would have been, yeah, okay. Right, you know, it's right. like, that, that's impressive. But actually watching that gives me, you know, it's like, that is something else. And that's that bot. Now, If you happen to be a big fan of the Cybertruck, you might also be interested in this super fun Cybertruck refrigerator magnet and bottle opener. It is made out of super thick stainless steel, just like the Cybertruck. And it has this giant magnet on the back, so it's gonna hold a lot of stuff on your refrigerator. It's an amazing gift and it comes in that great gift box that you saw before. Uh, that uses a magnet opener, just almost like an Apple box, you know, like when you get Apple products. You can buy it on Amazon for $29.95, or you can buy it direct from me by sending $25 to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk, all in lowercase letters. Please indicate whether you want the stainless steel look, or maybe you'd like to have this very clever camo version. And then if you're not in the U.S., please add $20 for freight. If you'd like more than one, please check the information below to get pricing, as well as all that information I just told you will be repeated in the information below. So once again, think about joining the channel, 
getting the up-to-date Tesla news every single day, I think you'll be glad you did.